What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com. So if you started off modeling in SketchUp and you're also trying to learn Blender, for whatever reason, it can be a little bit confusing. In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the things that you should know when learning to use Blender when you started off as a SketchUp user. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first off, you might need to know this for any number of reasons, right? You might be switching from SketchUp to Blender. You might be wanting to expand your modeling tool set, or you might just wanna learn how to render your SketchUp models inside Blender. But for any of those purposes, these are some important things you need to understand if you came from SketchUp. So first off, when you're working in Blender, um, there's two different modes that you need to know about to start off with. There's object mode, which is a mode where you're basically going to manage your objects that are inside of your model, right? So if I have two copies of my Bonnie model right here, notice how if I click on them, I can do things like tapping the G key to move them around. I can tap the S key to scale them, but everything that you're doing is being applied to the object overall. However, if you were to click this drop down and go over here, you can get into edit mode. So notice how when I get into edit mode, this is going to show up a little bit differently. You can also hit the tab key in order to do that quickly. But if I tab into edit mode, notice how now I can select the different parts and pieces of my model and move them around. So like for example, I can select all of these vertices and edges in here just by dragging a box across them like this. So um, this is where you're actually going to edit the inside of the objects. It's very much like if you had a group in SketchUp. So let's say you had a cube like this and you made it a group. Um, notice how I can't really edit the individual parts and pieces from in here, right? I, I can't offset the faces or anything like that. But what I do is I click into the group and then I can edit the individual objects, right? Well, in Blender, instead of double clicking into the group, you hit the tab key in order to get into this group. All right, so another thing that makes Blender a little bit different than SketchUp is the focus on not only faces and edges, but also on vertices. So in SketchUp, right, most of the time what you do is when you're editing an object, you would select a face and move it around, or you would offset it, um, or it's called inset in Blender, but you don't really do anything with vertices, right? Vertices are the individual edges that are in here. Um, well, in Blender, when you go into edit mode, there's really three options for ways that you can edit things in your model. So you've got the option for face select mode, which allows you to select individual faces. And let's go ahead and let's subdivide this surface so we can look at this a little bit more. So face select mode allows you to select individual faces you can tap the two key on your keyboard to go into edge select mode. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna put you in a mode where you select edges rather than faces and you edit those. And then the third option, which you can get to by tapping one, is going to basically allow you to select the individual vertices of an object like this and move them around. The vertices are basically the intersection point of the edges that make up the perimeter of your faces. So um, you use vertex editing a lot more in uh, Blender than you do in SketchUp. Now there are tools in SketchUp like sandbox tools that do that to a certain degree, but um, I think it's a little bit more robust over here in Blender. All right, so next up, and I'm gonna tab back into edit mode, there's a much higher emphasis on using quad modeling inside of Blender. And so what that does is that allows you to make adjustments a lot more quickly. So for example, this cube, right, is made up of six different faces and they're all quads, meaning they have four edges around the outside of them. Well, when you have quad modeling, what that allows you to do is that allows, allows you to do a, that allows you to use a more complex tool set um, than you could otherwise because quads are more predictable. And so what that means is you can do things like if I tap control R and scroll my mouse up, notice what this allows me to do is this allows me to add edge loops really quickly in here. So you can add different groups of edges um, a lot faster. So basically what I'm doing is I'm splitting this object up using edge loops. Well, then this also gives me um, better selection tools. So for example, because these are all quads, what I can do is I can quickly select and we'll use edge select mode, but I can hold the alt key or the alt shift key and I can click and notice what that does is that allows me to much more quickly select individual groups of geometry because they're made up of quads. And so we try to keep things as quads as much as possible because it gives us this more robust tool set. And so there's a lot more that you can do with that, but notice how, um, for example, if I was to create a circle or a UV sphere, 
like this and then tab into edit mode so I can use that same tool set in here to add things like edge loops right up until the very top, right? At the very top, notice how that doesn't work anymore because at the top, this object no longer has quads. So that quad tool set isn't going to work. So in Blender, we try to keep things to quads as much as possible. That's also gonna make things like mapping textures on more complex objects um, easier to use as well. Okay, so next I wanna talk a little bit about these buttons up here because a lot of beginners get hung up on this. So Blender has different viewport view modes and it has more than SketchUp partially because it's also a rendering engine. So um, these buttons up here are going to allow you to adjust the way that your model looks. So for example, if I click in here and I click on this wireframe mode, what this is gonna do is it's only gonna show me the edges that make up objects in Blender. If I click on the second object, it's gonna put me in a shaded mode. The shaded mode is gonna show me the surfaces of objects, but it's not gonna show me things like materials. So this can be really important if you have like really heavy materials or something like that. Um, and then this third option is going to put us in a material preview mode. That's going to show us our object while also showing us what the textures are going to look like on a surface. So I have a lot of people that tell me, hey, I don't have any materials in my Blender model. You do, but you just need to click on this button right here in order to see the material preview. Or you might not have materials applied and you need to, but you can toggle between those like this. And then finally, this last option over here is going to put you in rendered mode. So there's two primary render engines in Blender, and you can access the settings for those by clicking on the little camera in your render properties over here. And so notice how you can switch between EV, Workbench, or Cycles. We're gonna focus mostly on EV and Cycles. So EV is the real-time renderer, and what the real-time renderer does is it shows you the changes in real time. But you might notice if you look down here, for example, that your shadows don't necessarily look ultra good. They look kind of clunky, right? So Eevee is going to be your faster rendering tool. Cycles is going to be your tool that does more of like a path tracing. So what it does is it calculates where the light goes. So if I click the drop down and switch to cycles, it's going to look something like this. And so as a general rule, EV is going to be faster. Cycles is going to give you a little bit better lighting result. But just be aware that those are in here and you can actually render images directly inside of Blender without having to use an external renderer like you might have to use with SketchUp. So something like a V-Ray or Twin Motion or something like that. Okay, and so sometimes people get confused because they try to add things like let's do a Shift A and add like a monkey, for example. We're gonna add a monkey right here, but you can't really see that in the scene. Well, that's because the monkey got placed all the way over here. And the reason the monkey got placed all the way over here is because of the 3D cursor. So the 3D cursor is basically something that's built into Blender that you can adjust by doing a shift right click. And basically what it does is it allows you to dictate a location in a 3D space. So in this situation, right, I'm dictating this location right here. Well, that means when I add an object, so if I do a shift A and then add like a sphere, notice how that sphere gets placed at the point that I've selected with my 3D cursor. So by placing the 3D cursor, you're dictating where an object is going to be placed inside of a 3D space in Blender. Okay, so not only is the 3D cursor important, understanding object origins is important as well. So notice how if I click on this monkey, right, there's currently a little orange dot right in the middle of that object. That orange dot for any object is going to dictate where the object origin is. What that means is that means that any like transformation or anything that you do with that object is going to be based on this point. It's very similar to the object axes inside of SketchUp, the ones that are actually inside of the individual groups or components. But basically what it does is it dictates things like where transformations occur from. So notice how right here, for example, if I tap the S key to scale this object, it's scaling at about the center of the object. But it's really not paying attention to the center of the object. It's only paying attention to where that object origin is. And so there's a lot of different object options for snapping your origin to different places. So for example, let's say I was to do a shift right click right here, and I was to go to my object and click on origin, I could go to origin to 3D cursor. Well, when I do that, notice how my object origin is no longer on my object in Blender. What that means is that means if I do something like tapping the S key to scale it, Notice how that scale is now going to happen based on the object origin point 
rather than the center of my object. So if you ever have something that's acting weird like this, um, you probably need to pay attention to where that object origin is. And you can reset it to the center of your object by going to object, set origin, and we're gonna say origin to center of mass volume. And so that's gonna place this to the center of mass. You can also, if you click on the options button right here and select the option for effect only origins, you can move the object origin manually using the move tool like this. So if you do want some more control over that, you can go to the effect only origins right here. All right, so next up, let's talk about probably one of the biggest selling points of Blender as a software, which is the ability to model non-destructively using modifiers. You're going to want to learn how to do this because it is super, super powerful. So let's say that we had this object right here, right? And let's say that we wanted to create copies of this object this way. Well, in SketchUp, what you would do is you would use the Move tool in Copy Mode in order to create copies. However, in Blender, there's another way to do this, which is non-destructive, making that adjustable. So if you click on the um, little wrench over here in your window, there's an option here for Modifier Properties. Well, there's a drop-down in here that allows you to apply different modifiers to your model. There's a ton of them. I've done videos on a bunch of them, which I can link to in the notes down below. But in this case, we're gonna focus on this one, which is the array function. Well, what the array function allows us to do is this allows us to create copies of an object based on factors. So let's say that I wanted to create copies of this object this way. And I'm gonna go ahead and say this is gonna be 1.1 so that I have a little bit of spacing between my objects. Right, well in SketchUp, what you would do is you would use the move tool in copy mode and you'd be kind of be stuck with the number of copies you created. But with Blender, you can adjust this live like this. So you can use this in order to quickly create copies and the number of copies is adjustable. So, and I don't wanna get super into the array function. I more want you to understand that this is all being done in a non-destructive fashion, meaning that you can change it. And what you can do is you can stack modifiers on top of each other, right? So if I wanted this to create an array this way, then I wanted to create another array. I could add another modifier like this. And I can use this to create multiple different things. I can stack these effects on top of each other. So within Blender, the cool thing about that is if I was to turn these off in my display, like this, you can see how I have this one individual object that's being used to create all of this additional stuff. And so with those modifiers, you can apply them. So if you click on the drop down right here and click on apply, basically what that's gonna do is that's going to make them permanent. So now this is in here as a permanent change. You don't generally wanna do this unless you're exporting to another software, but these modifiers are a really powerful way to do non-destructive modeling inside of Blender. All right, so next up, and one of the more jarring things, at least for me when I first started using Blender, was there doesn't appear to be snapping like there is in SketchUp. Like in SketchUp, there's this inferencing engine where you activate a tool like the Move tool. And if I mouse over this, it's giving me these different dots in here, right? And then I can use the inferencing to do things like aligning different points of objects, other things like that. Um, by default, nothing like this is turned on in Blender. That doesn't mean that it doesn't exist though. So you can toggle snapping on either by doing a shift tab or by clicking on this little button right here, um, the little magnet, that's going to indicate that snapping is on. And you can set different things that objects are going to snap to. Like for example, I usually select the vertex, but you can also do a shift click to select multiple different objects in here. And so what that's going to do is that's going to give us the ability when we select an object in order to snap. So notice how if I mouse near this corner right here with this object selected, and then I tap the G key and then I move this, what this is going to do is this is going to move this object and it's going to try to snap it to whatever it finds in the 3D space, right? And so one thing it doesn't do is it doesn't give you that same inferencing that you get in SketchUp, but you can use the inference locking in order to align objects. And so this can be really valuable. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump into shaded mode for just a second so I can see this a little better. And one thing you might wanna do is you might wanna adjust the snap width to something like the active or something like that. This can make this work a little bit better. But what you can do is you can use this in order to snap an object 
to an object inside of Blender. So for example, what I might do is I might tap the G key and notice how I had to move this a couple different times um, because this gets a little bit funky. So I might need to move this up and then use the snap with closest. But this does allow you to snap to different objects inside of Blender in order to precisely place them. But like I said, it's lacking in precision a little bit. It kind of jumps around, but it is definitely similar to the snapping tools that you have inside of SketchUp. All right, so next up, is a function that not only makes uh, Blender a lot more powerful, but also a lot more confusing to SketchUp users. So um, for SketchUp users, basically the way that the materials work is you've got a texture image that you apply to an object, right? That's basically it. Um, you can adjust the size and some other things, but you don't really have to worry about any kind of maps or anything like that because SketchUp's not a rendering engine. However, in Blender, if you click over to the shading tab and you select a material, like this one, for example, you have options for a whole bunch of other things, right? So this one, for example, is just a procedural noise material that I created, but you can actually set up materials that adjust based on different settings that you select, right? So if I adjust like my detail or other things like that, this material is like live adjusting inside of Blender. So what that does is that gives you a lot more control over the way your objects look, not only for procedural materials like this, but if I jump over into my asset browser and I apply a material like this wood material, there's settings in here. We're gonna go back to our shader editor, but there's also settings in here that are gonna allow you to adjust things like how reflective your objects are and other things like this. So you don't need all of these nodes in SketchUp because it doesn't have a rendering engine associated with it, but you do kind of need them in Blender because you're going to be dictating things like the way that things are going to render out. And so the, the materials in Blender are a lot more powerful, but they're also a lot more complex. So you're probably going to be learning how to use these nodes in order to make your materials look better for your final results. All right, so the last thing is Blender has a more powerful UV mapping engine. Um, it's also a lot more complex, but if you go over to UV editing, for an object like this and um, you select all of your different surfaces, what you can do is you can actually take those and you can adjust the way the materials sit on your faces inside of Blender. So this does also usually mean that you need to do some kind of a UV unwrapping. So um, in this case, I'm just going to do a smart UV correct or project. But basically what this does is this sets this up so that you can adjust things like the direction of materials on your objects. So if I rotate this object, for example, notice how I can adjust the direction that the brick is going like this. You can also select the whole thing and adjust the size by doing a scale or something like that. So the UV mapping and projection is a lot more powerful, but it is a lot more complicated in Blender. And what it does do is it allows you to really quickly texture multiple different objects or multiple different surfaces in a realistic way. But again, it is a lot more complex as well. So let me know what I left off the list. These are things that you need to understand if you're coming to Blender from SketchUp or if you're just a beginner in general, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below what you thought. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.